Welcome to an unboxing featuring what is possibly the worst retail box that I've ever seen. <laughs> this is the Drobe OS, as you can tell by the small sticker located somewhere on the outside of what otherwise looks like a shipping carton. So I went and I opened it up thinking, oh, there's probably a retail Drobo unit inside. No, no, they sent me an OEM one, which is fine. There are retail boxes and that's what you'll see at your local NCIX store. But for the purpose of the video that we're doing, they just sent me an OEM one because I don't think they realized I was going to do an unboxing in addition to the actual Tech Tips video. So here we are. Let's find out what comes with the Data Robotics Drobo S. Welcome to the world of Drobo. All right, so we have power, got your AC to DC adapter, got your AC power cord, which is your standard computer one, rather than being that notebook one that there's never one handy when you need one. So that's perfect. Restore CD, as well as a getting started guide, which is about 4,000 pages thick. I really hope this is in a number of different languages here. Yes, it is. Oh, good. Because if the manual was that thick and the whole point of this product is that it's easy to use, then a step was missed somewhere. Okay, here we go. USB 3 cable. eSATA cable. Nice, long, robust feeling eSATA cable. Very, very confident about this particular SATA cable. It's about a one Linus height, so a little bit more. So it's about six feet tall, long. Uh, and then we also have a Firewire B cable. So they include high quality versions of pretty much all of the cables you require and nice long cables too. So they're not like a lot of companies with their external enclosures that include short little rinky dinky cables so that you have to put the box next to your monitor or next to your PC. They give you the option to put it somewhere more convenient. So this is also a six foot long cable and that's the USB 3A to B. So that's the extra pins are all in there. Remember, you can use a USB 2 A to B cable, so that's like your standard printer cable, but it will only operate at USB 2.0 speed. So let's go ahead and tuck all of this stuff away and get the actual Drobo S itself out of the box. So it comes very, very well packed. You can see it's using a closed cell phone with a good inch of empty space, an inch plus of empty space on all sides. So your Drobo is going to be nice and protected in transit. All right, let's take these off. There you go. I always prefer closed cell phone because it is more durable and more resistant to multiple impacts. It also has a nice little dust cover on it, so it's not going to get scratched or anything. Uh, Okay, let's go ahead and extract it. So the Drobo OS is the natural progression from the original Drobo. So this isn't, sorry, this isn't the network version of the Drobo, that's the Drobo FS, but the advantages that this one has over the original Drobo is that it has five bays as opposed to the original Drobo's four bays. It also has a w much, much wider variety of interfaces. So the original Drobo was only USB, and then there was an additional version of it that I think added Firewire, or something like that, yeah. And then the Drobo S adds to that by providing not only USB, but USB 3, eSATA, oh, I think there was an eSATA version at some point as well. Okay, whatever. This one is the current one. This is the one that matters. USB 3, two Firewire 800 ports, eSATA, your power, Kensington lock so that you can make sure that it doesn't walk away on you, a power switch on the back. Oh, that's just a power cycle switch. Interesting. Or, oh, okay. We'll have to find out why it is that it turns itself off right away. Maybe it's a matter of it has to actually be plugged in in order to do that. You've also got a reset button here and the cooling fan at the back of the unit. So I wonder if I can even take this apart. The Drobo is meant to be more of an appliance. So you can see here, there's a warranty void if removed. So I'm not going to be taking the panels apart and actually pulling the, uh, the unit limb from limb. Let me just see if I can figure out how big that fan is at the back, because I wanted to be able to tell you guys. Yeah, that's a 120 millimeter fan. I can see the blades moving now. So the 120 millimeter fan at the back, which means that it's going to stay nice and cool and also be very quiet when it's pulling air across the drives. Remember, once you install a drive in here, it will stay open like that. In fact, you know what? Let's, let's just throw a drive in here really quick so that you guys can see. Uh, here we go. So here are some of the drives that we're going to be using to test out the Drobo. I haven't talked much about what makes Drobo special overall though, so let's show the easy installation first. It's just kind of... 
Yeah. There we go. Hold on. There we are. So it locks in place like that. So you can put it up to five drives. And once it's open, you can see there's actually a gap. So some airflow will come through. So what makes Drobo special? Drobo is the easy answer to RAID. So RAID can be complicated because you do need a RAID controller. So you need an actual logic board if you want to have any kind of reliable RAID 5 or RAID 6. Okay, so you need that. You need, <laughs> highly recommended, you need identical drives. So RAID works best when you have all the same hard drives so that they all perform exactly the same and so you don't have any weird issues like with your WD greens dropping out of the RAID array or one drive performing better than the other one or one drive performing slower than the other one dragging down the performance of the whole array. Drobo, you don't have to worry about that because rather than using a standard type of RAID, it actually uses their proprietary uh, non-RAID but also redundant backup. So what that means is that it protects you from drive failure much like RAID, but it doesn't use a standard RAID. So you just pop in whatever old drives you want, whether you, you want to mix up capacities, you want to mix up manufacturers, you want to mix up speed bins, none of that matters. You just throw in whatever you please and Drobo will automatically balance the storage around between the drives to provide you redundant storage, so safe storage, as well as convenient storage. Now the other thing that Drobo does really well and we will of course be doing a full episode on this, is protects from data loss. So if any one of those drives fails, it will notify you, and all you have to do is replace the drive, it'll rebuild itself, and take care of you that way. Drobo's also scalable in a way that RAID isn't really. RAID, you usually have to get everything you want, unless you're talking about very expensive RAID cards, like hardware RAID cards. You have to have everything you want for your storage pool, you have to add it all at the same time, and then you're pretty much kind of locked in. Drobo, you buy one of these, you buy one drive, or I'd recommend two drives at least, you buy two drives, and then as the sweet spot changes for cost per gigabyte in terms of hard drive capacity, you can add drives that are higher capacity and less expensive in order to expand the drive as you go. So you might buy it with two one terabyte drives now while hard drives are expensive due to the shortage and then as prices go down you might add a two terabyte and then you go okay I'm out of storage now add a three terabyte and so on and so forth. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Drobo S. Don't forget to subscribe not only to Linus Tech Tips but also to NCIX Tech Tips for more content like this as well as more content about this and check this out there's a handy little guide there. All the drives have their own indicator LEDs, which tell you what's going on. Nothing, system healthy, add a drive here soon, cool. Don't remove this drive because it's balancing data. Add a drive here and drive failure replace.